everyone and welcome to my podcast. I'm Jeanette from Crafty Clegg's Creations and I live in the northwest of England with my husband Timothy and our dog Zach. You can find me on most social media platforms. I'm most active on Instagram. I have got a Facebook account and of course here on YouTube. I will put the links to everything in the description box below. Um, if you're a returning viewer, thank you for coming back and I have had a few new subscribers so thank you very much for joining me. Um, anything else I need to tell you? I do have a little Etsy shop which again I will leave the link to my shop in my description box below. And other than that, we've got all the um, introductions out of the way. How is everyone doing? Um, today is Monday, is it the 7th, no the 8th of June, the year is flying by, I cannot believe it's June already, so yeah today is Monday the 8th of June um, and what have I got to tell you, there's not really very much um, I've got to tell you about personal life really, um, a couple of things, obviously Tim and I are doing okay um, Tim's doing better than I am, to be fair. I have my up days and my down days with all this blooming corona or COVID-19 virus going round. It's all a little bit unsettling, isn't it? I have to say, I'm getting used to my lifestyle now of being at home. I have been out a couple of times, um, but nothing, nothing like I'm used to, that's for certain. Um, Tim seems to be taking it just in his stride. He'd, he just doesn't seem to, yeah, doesn't seem to be phasing him at all. Um, so yeah, we're all okay. Um, since I last saw you, I have had my craft room revamped. Not that you can see much difference. It probably, from what you can see now, probably won't seem like anything's changed really. But because obviously I knew the room, I knew what it needed doing, it was in quite a state. Um, so we've had, I've had my craft room revamped, we've had new doors fitted, um, we've had some coving fitted, redecorating, shuffled around, um, we have had a trip to Ikea, which was, I have to say, the trip to Ikea amazed me. It was so well organised, very organised inside the store, I didn't feel at all, um, uncomfortable. Tim and I when we go out we do always put masks on, we always have masks and um, I always wear a pair of gloves. Um, so I do, you know, try to do the best that I can to, to keep away from people and from people to keep away from me for obvious reasons, you know. Um, but the trip to Ikea was, I don't, I can honestly say probably more enjoyable than under normal circumstances. So we managed to get a few bits and pieces for my craft room. I've still got things to get, storage and one thing and another what I would like. But obviously, you know, there's only so much you can afford at one time. So I've done the best that I can with the funds that I had available to me. Um, and it's, it's looking a lot better. It's certainly a lot nicer of a room to be in. Um, it feels a lot less cluttered. Um, the storage and everything I have is much more organised, whereas at one time I had to come in and root through it because it seemed to become the clutter room, whereas now it's nice I can just come in and find the things that I want. So yeah, I'm really pleased with my craft room. I will, um, don't know whether I'll tag it on the end of the um, podcast or whether I'll do a separate little vlog for you, um, but I will take you on a tour around the craft room. Um, so yeah. So what other, oh and the, the other thing that I, I've got to tell you that's not craft related, um, for those of you that have been with me from the start, it's almost 12 months ago now since I started podcasting, wow again I can't believe how quickly time goes and I initially began to podcast because I was diagnosed with stage 4 breast cancer. Well, when I say stage four, it was, it's got a posh name and I can't remember it and I'll put it on the bottom of the screen here. But it was that stage four. So um, I'll, I'll put it on and you can read, I can't remember what it was now, off the top of my head. Um, and I had to have a lumpectomy and a round of radiotherapy. And that is why I initially started to podcast. 
obviously because of my love of crafts, but I wanted something that would always be on record for my children to see, my grandchildren to see, and just to see how I'd got on through my journey and you know how I'd coped with things and one thing and another. Anyway, it's almost 12 months now since I was diagnosed and I have had my letter to invite me back for um, a mammogram and a scan. And I have been, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I have, I have been anxious. My anxiety has been up and down for some time now, but I can only imagine a lot of people are like that. With the current situation, what we're going through, things aren't normal, are we? This isn't our normal way of life, having to stay away from family, friends, isolating like we are you know we're a nation of going out well most of us are a nation of going out meeting up with friends having holidays having days out and you know so that has been a little stressful at times and I am a person that does suffer slightly with anxiety um, and of course because I knew that my checkup was coming for my mammogram and my scan I was anxious that because of the situation excuse me I wouldn't be recalled and you know I'd perhaps have to wait some time but yes last week I think it was Friday might be, might have been Saturday I can't remember the letter popped through the door to invite me so I'm going on the 29th of June to have my mammogram and my scan and fingers crossed I am praying to goodness that it's all clear and I did say to Tim I'm hoping you know obviously I hope it's all clear but I'm hoping that when I go and I have my um, things done and they do give me the all clear, that I can sort of try and relax a little bit and maybe enjoy my life a little a little better. Um, because I'm, you know, I am anxious and it, it, is, it is difficult to live with something like that hanging over you. I know that it's hard to try and just carry on as normal, which I have tried to do desperately. And most of the time I'm okay. Um, but yeah, I think once you've got over the first hurdle, i.e. the year, you know, your one month checkup, your one yearly checkup rather, um, things will start to get better. Anyway, I'm rambling now. So yeah, I just wanted to tell you that I'm um, going for my mammogram at the end of this month. So I shall keep you informed. Um, can you just excuse me one minute? I shall be back in one second. Sorry about that. Right, so um, what I've got at the moment. So I have got some finished objects. I've got some works in progress. And I have got um, incoming, as in I've treated myself. I also did some hand dyeing, so I'm going to show you that and um, a little tiny shop update at the end. So what I think I'm going to do, I think I'm going to start off with my finished objects. Um, the first thing that I'm, I'm going to show you is I wanted to, I'm going to show you two things. Well, I'm show you this hat and then you can see the hat that I've made. I used my own and dyed yarn. Um, I've only had a go a couple of times at dyeing yarn and I have to say it didn't turn out quite as I expected um I do think whilst I was dying it in the process of dying it I'm a little heavy-handed um it's all get it all in there kind of thing and you can't be like that you've got to take your time you've got to um had uh, if you're doing speckling add a little bit at a time anyway basically I was like a bull in a china shop as a friend told me um, but luckily enough, it turned out okay, and I was quite happy with the end result. And I specifically dyed this yarn so I could make the Alter Hat by Emily Clawson from um, Meanwhile at the Castle. Um, and I, I used my own yarn. So let me show you my finished hat. I absolutely love this pattern. So I've made... It's, I haven't got, it, I haven't blocked it and I haven't got a head. I do need to get a polystyrene head so I can show it you. So this is the hat. This is the altar hat. Um, it's made holding two strands of yarn together. It's um, a fingering weight and um, a mohair. Um, I used, 
again I can't pronounce these, Chia, Chia Goo, Chia Goo. They're done on um, three and a quarter. You do the ribbing on three and a quarter and the hat, the body of the hat on four. Um, so yes, it's, it's how it's done. You, I, I don't know how to explain this and I don't really want to give too much away because obviously it's a paid pattern. But it's got, in fact, I won't tell you how it's done. It's got a picot edge, it's got a pretty lace pattern here, and then it's got a really nice round decrease in the top of it. Can you see how? That is lovely. So I'm undecided whether to put a pom-pom on here. I've got a really, really nice soft pom-pom. So I'm undecided whether to use a pom-pom on it. So I don't know, I might try it and see how it, it you know, how it looks. So that's my first finished object and I used Hell Double. This is the yarn that I dyed myself. That's, I don't know, the lighting. So that's my own hand dyed yarn and Tim named it. I originally thought it looked very much like candy floss and Tim said it did, but he preferred cotton candy. So this is, um, 75% merino, 25% nylon, and that's, we've named it Cotton Candy. And I used it held double with this one here. This is from Yarn for the Soul. This is Floof. And this one is called Baby Powder. And I used those. So I was really pleased with that. I've been wanting to make that hat for a while. And to be fair, when I dyed this and put it alongside that, I thought, I'm not sure if this is going to work. Well, obviously it'd work, but I wasn't sure if I was going to like it. I'm not going to try it on because obviously um, if I'm, if I don't want to spoil my hair, although that's a different story. Look at the state of my hair. It needs dyeing, it needs cutting. It's just, anyway, everybody's in the same boat, aren't they? So perhaps I should put this on to, to hide my hair. Anyway, so that's my first finished object. And I have to say, I'm really pleased with it. So that's the altar hat. I'm just gonna have a sip of my tea or coffee, I should say. It's in my strawberry mug, my Kath Kidston strawberry mug. Oh, I love coffee. I drink too much coffee, to be fair. Right, so the next thing, oops, dropping everything. I did show you this last time, but it wasn't finished. Anyway, it's all finished now. Um, and this is the Mushroom Fairy. She's got a um, toadstool for a hat. So yes, this is the Mushroom Fairy. This is an Amigurumi. And this one is by Sedfrey Bay. Again, I think I have in the last podcast put the... Um, I'm not going to put every link. I'll put the names of everything I make. Like I said last time, everything I make is very well known. Or I think it's quite well known on the internet. So if I put the name there, you can go and search it out for yourself. But it's this one. And it's by, I think that's how you say it, said Rath Bay. And it's the Mushroom Fairy. Really quite, again, pleased with this. Um, the hat took such a long time to do. Um, because it's it, it's that on the outside and then it's the same on the inside. Um, so yeah, the hat took me nearly a full night to make. Um, but she's really pretty, isn't she? She's got... You know, you can every you can take everything off. The hat comes off. Um, you can take a shawl off. You can't take a dress off. A dress, a dress is actually attached. Um, but yeah, I'm really, really pleased with her. I used um, Sheepies Katona and I used a Clover Amore 2.25 um, soft touch handled soft soft touch handled wow. crochet hook. I'm not sure if that's how you say it. But anyway, yeah, um, so yeah, I was really pleased with her. She's another one. Now, I was undecided whether to give this um, away to the, I'm making toys for children at Christmas that are underprivileged. And I wasn't sure whether to give this to them um, or whether to keep this for myself. But it sound, sounds really selfish, doesn't it, keeping it for yourself? But I really, really love it. And like Tim said, I could always make another one, come to and give, you know, 
specifically make one to give away. But yeah, I quite like that one, so I think I might keep that one for myself. So that's my second finished object. I love her ears. <laughs> really enjoyed making that. I've, I've really um, enjoyed making quite a lot of toys just recently. I'm, I'm very big into making toys. I like toy making. I'm not really a crafter that makes lots and lots of big things. It seems to take me forever and ever. And there's certain things, excuse me, there's certain things that I seem to struggle with. Um, sweaters I really struggle with. I'm all right with babies and children. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> oh, pardon me. Um, yeah, I'm all right knitting baby sizes and children's sizes, but when you get to my size, I mean, yeah, I don't know how these people do it. I would love to be able to knit sweaters all the time. Um, I might have a go at crocheting one, actually. I've seen quite a few just recently, quite nice crocheted sweaters that I might that I would quite like to have a go. But I've also got, at the moment, a cardigan, a crocheted cardigan that's three quarters of the way finished. I need to do maybe another... I don't know, maybe 10 rounds and then the sleeves and it's done. I really need to get on with that. Okay, so the second thing that I've finished, I'm sure some of you are aware, Dawn and I from Dawn's Days are doing a little make-along. We are doing, it's called Yarn Bird Mal 2020. And what we wanted, we just thought it'd be really good fun. It all started when Dawn... I'd bought herself this little bird cage and she decided to crochet some birds and decorate this cage, which was absolutely fabulous. And I saw it and I said to Dawn, oh gosh, I said, that is lovely. I've got to have a go at making that. But unfortunately, when I saw it, we was right smack bang in the middle of isolation and I couldn't get out and get a bird cage. So I don't know if you can see... Where's my finger? This little tiny one here. I will bring it over after and show you. But I just happened to have this little tiny cage here, which actually was sort of a decoration for ins for a candle. I had a candle and that came. So I used that. Um, and then Dawn came up with this really good idea. She said, why don't we do a make-along? So, hence the Yarnbird Mal 2020 came to fruition so I did this one and what we've asked you to do is to do anything um, as long as it's in yarn and it's a bird if you can't knit or crochet that's fine as long as you use pom-poms you can felt a bird there's anything um, and all we ask you to do, well, when I say we ask you to do, if you want to and join along, is just make birds. We just thought it'd be a really good fun thing to do and um, there will be prizes at the end. We've decided, or we've sort of worked it between us, um, Dawn will pick um, a winner and I'll pick a winner, whichever, you know, it's just for fun. But there will be prizes. We are going to give prizes away. I'll give you, I'm going to do um, a project bag and a little notions pouch and maybe a few little bits and pieces maybe some stitch markers and a little chocolate and you know just give you a nice little prize um and I did or Tim did build me out of cardboard a birdhouse and I have to say I'm not going to lie I did not get on with it I did not enjoy trying to cover this birdhouse with yarn it just looked untidy i couldn't get the stitches right it just wasn't it just wasn't me so i might have another go before the end of the month i'm not promising i might have another go before the end of the month but i found a pattern that i'd bought a while back and i thought i'll have a go at this so i have made and i'm going to make more of these to hang in the corner here in my craft room a seagull it is, I just love it. It's just the cutest thing ever. Now, you are supposed to have knots in its legs for its knees, I guess, I don't know. But I completely forgot all about it. By the time I'd attached the, the legs to the body, there's not enough, how can I explain? There's not enough fabric for me to make a knot. So unfortunately, this seagull of mine has not got 
any knees but I am going to do some more so yeah I'm going to do about three or four and I thought if I hang them in the corner there how nice would that be so yeah this is another one of my contributions towards our yarn bird mouth 2020 and I let me show you the pattern I'll just put that down the pattern is by um, sardines for tea and sue jobson you can get this on the internet i bought this from black sheep yarns in warrington or oh, maybe last year this was last year that i bought this really really simple pattern to um make it is done on 3.25 needles and it's done on it's not in the round on the round rather it's done with straight pin with straight needles a really really um, easy make really fun and I used the Rikaruma Rikaruma I don't know if it's cotton and you don't even use I mean I, I, you could probably get out of the three balls you could probably get two seagulls out of that but that is a really really fun make um, definitely going to make some more of them um, probably this week um, so yeah, them are my finished objects. Um, so what I'll do next is work in projects. No, work in, work in progress. Oh, I'll tell you. Um, what I've got on the needles or the hook. Um, let me show you. I have shown you this other one before. Um, it's a re I've, I'm re don't get me wrong I really enjoy doing it but it's really really slow going um, I just I don't know just seem to be quite slow at everything I do just recently but the thing is I have we have been like I said tied up with the craft room and I'm terrible I get so distracted by other things and I think I'll start this I'll start that and in, instead of just concentrating on two or three things I just get so carried away and want to do everything but then I guess I, you know I think every crafter's like that isn't it anyway I'll quickly show you this because you have seen it before but I just wanted to like show you the, the progress that I've made um, it's the moon wake shawl and um, it's by just bear with me, Andre, Andrea Maury. I have done quite a lot since I last saw you. So I've done one full repeat. One full repeat. And I'm on this, I think that is this, that is one repeat there. So I'm on to the second one now. Is that right? Yeah. I'm on to the second one now. And then you've got. I've probably got another one and a little bit to do. So I am, I am. You know, I have made good progress with that. Um, I'm going to sneeze, bear with <sighs> Um It's in my patchwork bag. Oh, excuse me, that I made with my gnomes. And I'm making it with the Millamine Sweden and it's Aaron. It's done on four and a half millimetre circulars. So yeah, I just quickly wanted to show you that. I'm hoping to get that finished next time. I shouldn't put myself under any pressure, should I? Because that's the thing, isn't it? You, you know, that's why you keep coming back to watch, isn't it? Because you like to see how we're getting on and what we're making. And, you know, and as long as it gets finished, at the end of the day, that's all that matters, isn't it? So there's that. And my daughter has asked for um, some socks for Christmas. Now, as you all know, if you've followed me, you'll know that I, in my mind, I love making socks. But for some reason, it's just something that I just don't get on with very well. I can do them. It's not that I can't do them. And I don't know if it's because um, I can't find the right, what can I say, needles. I have watched quite a few people. I do watch quite a few other podcasters um, and certain people just seem to get on with it really well. I've seen people do them on DPNs. I've seen people do them in the magic loop and I'm actually using at the moment. I am make, making a pair of socks. They are 23, 
are they 23 centimeters and they really really make my wrist ache i mean i've started my sock on them now so i'm going to finish this pair of socks on these 23 millimeter but i don't at centimeters rather i don't think i'll ever use them again let me show you so this my socks are in my bag that was um inspired by um sherry iris i did some of this hand embroidery she did a tutorial on that so because i'd done it on a piece of um linen i didn't know what to do with it so i thought i'd make myself a nice bag so i made this bag that's the embroidery i did and i lined it with a little dipsy print um and i am using just bear with me let me get them out Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> I am using the West Yorkshire Spinners. And the needles are Addy. And they are only 20 centimetres, not 23. My goodness. The 20 centimetres and 2.5. And this is how far I've got. I've not got very far. I only started them last night show you that's it <laughs> so I'm making these for my daughter well actually I don't know who I'm making these for all I know is I've got to do two pair of socks I did speak to them the other day and gave them the choice and they couldn't make their mind up so and they're both the same size my daughter and her partner um Justina so they did say just make the socks mum and we'll choose between us so I'm making a pair of socks in these and I'll show you the other colorway I've got um later but I think this this size of um circular needle is really not doing my wrist any good it is making my wrist ache like I say I, w I will by the time I've done the ribbon and I think I only got up to maybe four rows my wrist was hurting me so I know I'm only going to be able to do a little bit at a time um, and I think I'm going to have to do both socks on the same one because I don't obviously want them the same um, so yeah that's that's my socks that I'm doing at the moment and them are for either Katie or Justina and the other thing that I'm making the one last thing that I'm making this is um, not like me to do a knitted toy. I usually make lots of crochet toys, but I, I saw this and I thought, I've got to have a go at that. That is so cute. And it's called My Angry Cat. <laughs> Again, I will leave you the link or the name of the pattern below. And I just saw this on Instagram and I thought, I have got to have a go at that. But does that not look like an angry cat? I love it. Anyway, I have got to doing, I've done the body and inserted the eyes. Um, I've got to play around with it a little bit. Um, let me just sort the eyes out for you. There you go. So I've got his body done. Um, it's not as easy to stuff, I don't think, a knitted toy as it is a crochet toy. Crochet toys seem a little bit more, they have a little bit more body. Um, and they're more pliable when you're stuffing them. You can get away with, I don't know, you can get away with stuffing it a little bit more and it, it's still looking quite neat. Anyway, that's the body. And I have done two arms that I've not got on yet. So we've got two arms. Obviously one there, I'll put him down. Let me just put him down. So I've done two arms. so many pieces ears and a hat this is his hat can't really tell it's because I've not got them knitted together uh, sewn together so that's his hat um, and I put the hat on before just to have a quick look at what it looked like and he, he looks even grumpier it looks even angrier with his hat on than he does without it How adorable is that? So that's one of the other working projects I've got. 
and that's it for finished projects and working projects um the next thing i'm going to show you i've had a little treat i treated myself um i last i think it was the last podcast that i showed you i showed the fact that i'd got some hand sewing that i needed doing unfortunately i haven't got around to doing it again because we've been busy with the craft room and one thing and another um but i i thought to myself i need one of these nice needle keepers and on instagram again and i will i will put the link to the lady's shop um in the description box below this lady has some fantastic things in a shop um and so i just had to have a little treat so the first one i got this is for when i'm doing my hand embroidery is um a magnetic needle minder um is that not just gorgeous that is a piece of battenberg <laughs> she's so talented this lady i love it so that's my needle keeper with this is the magnet that goes on the back so you obviously put this on the front of your work and that on the back of your work and just holds your needle when you want to make coffee or whatever um and then i had to have this this is a well-known biscuit <laughs> And that is a needle threader. That's upside down, sorry about that. So yeah, I um, was really pleased with them when they came. And like I say, I was saying before that I needed to make two pairs of socks. I already had that ball of yarn that I actually bought last year and never got around to using. That's for one pair. But then I was watching Ellie from Craft House Magic and I just happened to go and have a look in her shop and these accidentally fell in my basket and I had to buy them. I love how um, Ellie says confessions. I love it because every week Ellie has confessions. She's always treating herself. I love it. She's a bad influence and so is Dawn from Dawn's Days. They're really bad influences. If you go over and watch them, they have some yummy things. And then, of course, you think, oh, gosh, I'll have to have a look. And if you're like me, you just can't resist. So this is my other um, sock set that I'm going to make for either Katie or Justina. And it's from, like I said, from Ellie from Craft House Magic. Is that not just a beautiful Christmassy sock set? And I opted for um, a charm. A stitch marker rather and this is called jingle bell rock this is 75 percent superwash merino and 25 percent nylon so i'm going to make a pair of shorties in that one so i got that one from ella and always you get a little tiny gift from ella so i'm um, got a little mini skein and then the last thing that arrived was I am in um, a mini, oh, oh, I can't talk today. What is up with me? I really need to go out more. My, if I didn't know better, I'd be worried that I was losing my marbles, but well, I don't think I'm using my marbles. Um, I am in a mini skein club from um, a company call for the yarn. For the yarn of soul for the soul of you oh see i can't even remember put it on the description box below or oh, please excuse me anyway i um get a monthly subscription for minis and it's um beatrix potter themed the minis club that i'm in and that arrived this month and here are the two skeins that arrived this month those are so pretty I think I'm going to have to start using these and it's Mr. Pickle Pickle Pin. Prickle Prickle Pin. I think it's supposed to be the Ed Jug. show you. Yeah. Oh, you can see where it comes, the inspiration, can't you? She's so clever, this lady. Love this lady. Anyway, so um that's it really. The last thing I'm going to show you is the other skein of yarn that Tim and I, well, I dyed it really, Tim didn't. Um, 
and I haven't got a name for this one. This it, this is a crazy one. This this skein of yarn makes me feel a little bit anxious because it's very loud and I mean I like bright colours but even this for me. So this is the other one we dyed. I mean actually if you look at it it's got blues in it. I don't know if you can see. It's got blues in it and um, greens. There is a little bit of green. There's a bit of orange but it's mainly it's obviously mainly red as you can see. But I might make a little shawl out of this, a shawlette or something. I don't know. But that might actually look quite nice knitted up. But I haven't got a colourway for it. So if anybody, if you look at that, if anybody can think of a nice colour, uh, a nice name for this colour, I'm always open to suggestions. Okay. And that's it I'm afraid I've got nothing else to show you other than a small shop update um I wanted to just say thank you very much for anybody who um watches my podcast that bought my advent calendar it did sell out um I think it was on sale for about 10 days and it sold out so thank you so much for anybody that did purchase an advent calendar from me um I'm almost I'm almost sorted with my advent calendar. I've had so much fun. Um, yeah, I've really, really had so much fun. Now it's it's time to start sewing. Um, I've got um, lots and lots of bags to sew. And this week I wanted to do my Record Me podcast today. And then Tim and I are going out shopping, food shopping later. And then all this week, it's getting down to doing some serious cutting out and sewing and basically getting prepared. Because before you know it, people think, oh gosh, it's only June and we're thinking about Christmas. But before you know it, I'll be ready to send out uh, my advents overseas. And it just whizzes by time. So yeah, that's what I'll be doing. Um, so thank you very much for anybody that has bought my advent calendar. Also, thank you for anybody that's purchased from my shop. Um, I had some nice orders over the weekend, so thank you very much for that. I have got a few more bags that's left that's in the shop, um, and I have got them here. I will show them to you. Um, I've only got, well, there is more bags in the shop, but these are the latest ones that have just gone in. So this, this one that I've made, um, this is a really nice sparkly bee fabric. It's all glittery. It's really nice and the bottom is glitter. Obviously it's fully lined. I've got my stamp in it with um, drawstrings. So there's that one, which is a nice one. I love this material. This material is fabulous. Um, right, so there's the P and a matching notion pouch and again that's lined but i love that is that not the cutest thing so there's the p like i said with a little notion pouch that's left in my shop and then let me show you this one there's the carrot and again that's a drawstring the little notion pouch fully lined it's lovely so yeah there's a few new bags in the shop um i will be making a few more i've got um a couple more things that i want to make and they'll probably go in the shop sometime over the next week or so but i'm going to mainly concentrate on trying to get the bags cut out and at least make a start for them the christmas bags um so other than that all that's left for me to say is Thank you so much for tuning in and watching me ramble. And it has been a bit of a ramble one today, hasn't it? So I do apologise. Um, but yeah, um, I hope you're all staying safe. I hope you're all well. And I shall see you next time. Take care and keep crafting. And of course, don't forget to press that like button and subscribe. Take care. Bye.